Lord Aya Vaikundar C. C. Tamil, Aya Vaikuntar also known as Tenth Avatar or Incarnation of Lord Vishnu, also called as Sriman Narayana Vaikundasami or Narayana Pandaram, was a 19th century social reformer and iconoclast who worked for the upliftment of downtrodden people in the kingdom of Travancore. He is central to the Hindu denomination of Ayavazi, as per Holy Scripture. Akilataratu Amanai says that he was Lord Vishnu. In order to attain human form, Lord Vishnu used the body of previous Lord Krishna avatar for the incarnation of Lord Aya Vaikundar, kept in Parvatha Uchi Malai a mythical mountain believed to be in this region after the completion of the Lord Krishna avatar. In order to attain natural growth of the human body, Lord Vishnu used the soul of Sampuranathevan a diva also called Mudasudam Purumal, he was granted moksha liberation from the cycle of death and birth, synonymous with heaven before the Lord Aya Vaikundar avatar in the sea, the exact date of birth of Mudasudam Purumal or Mutokuti is unknown. It is mostly placed in either 1810 or 1809, while others follow the view of Akilam. Early life Sampuranathevan also known as Mutokuti was born in 1809 to Panu Nadar and Vailal Ama at Puvandanthapi in the Kanyakumari district part of Travancore then. They initially named the child Mudasudam Purumal, meaning, Lord with a crown. But the people complained to authorities about the name and they forced the parents to change his name to Mutokuti. Mutukuti was a religious boy who had special interest in Lord Vishnu. The holy book Akilam mentions that he set a pedestal for Lord Vishnu in his house. At age of 17, Mutukuti started to live with Tirumalamal from the nearby village of Puvir and she lived with him only to serve him during his public activities. Tirumalamal had been married, but left her former husband to marry Mutukuti. According to quotes found in Akilam, they had a male child, who was sired by her first husband. Mutukuti earned his living as a Palmyra palm climber and as an agricultural laborer. <inaudible> Legend Ayavazi scripture Akilam tells of a legend of a child who was born dead. Next, immediately the soul of Sampuranathevan was installed into the body, kept in Parvatha Uchi Malai a mythical mountain believed to be in this region after the completion of the Lord Krishna avatar. According to the legend, the parents found the child still for a time immediately after birth, then the child began to behave normally. Thereafter, that boy grew up called Mutokuti in human history and Sampuranathevan in Ayavazi mythology. Ayavazi beliefs Lord Aya Vaikundar Avatar Ayavazi followers believe that Lord Vishnu itself incarnated as Lord Aya Vaikundar during an encounter with a deity goddess Lakshmi. As per Akilam, Mutukuti in his 24th year, he was struck by illness and suffered for a year. His mother took her sick son to the temple at Thiruchender, during a festival there. He went into the sea and disappeared. The parents searched for his body for one day. According to the legend, the day itself inside the sea Mutukuti also known as Sampuranathevan was granted moksha by Lord Narayana. Thereafter Lord Narayana itself incarnated as Lord Aya Vaikundar as a son of Supreme Lord Narayana and Goddess Lakshmi, that is considered to be the unique in Ayavazi mythology. On the third day, Lord Aya Vaikundar appeared on the seashore. On seeing him, Mutukuti's mother mistook him for her son and tried to embrace him. He told her that he was no longer her son, but the son of Supreme Lord Narayana. Then he started walking towards Dechanam. This place became a holy place for the devotees of Ayavazi and they erected a temple there named Avatharapathi. This event is celebrated during the festival of Aya Vaikundar Avataram. Lord Aya Vaikundar, who arose from the sea at Thiruchender per Akilathiratu Amanai on 20th of the Tamil month of Masi 4 underscore March underscore 1831 CE, Friday, is considered a unique avatar by the followers of Ayavazi. Akilam, speaks about it in great detail, as summarized below. In each of the five yugas prior to the avatar of Lord Aya Vaikundar, as each fragment of crony evil or devil came into physical form, the Lord Vishnu incarnated as well, destroying them. 
However, in this the sixth yuga, the evil was called Kali, not the Hindu deity and having no physical form see pre-incarnational events for this account, he occupied the mind of people of earth as the Maya illusion, causing them to behave discourteously. Kalian claimed, it was impossible to destroy him by the use of weapons in this yuga as in the previous ones as he held the boon from supreme god Shiva, that is the reason Lord Narayan, to incarnate as Pandaram in the world to destroy him. Since God incarnated as Pandaram, the avatar of Lord Aya Vaikundar in three stages. The first stage of avatar was the born dead child birth of the body. Next, immediately the soul of Sampuranathevan was installed into the body, along with the body of Narayana kept in Parvatha Uchi Malai a mythical mountain believed to be in this region after the completion of the Lord Krishna avatar. This was the second stage of the avatar. Then in the sea, during the twenty-fourth year, the soul of Sampuranathevan was granted moksha liberation from the cycle of death and birth, synonymous with heaven, unified to the ultimate soul. Now, Lord Narayana itself incarnated as Lord Aya Vaikundar in the body of human being Mutukuti, also known as the body of Narayana kept in Parvatha Uchi Malai a mythical mountain believed to be in this region after the completion of the Lord Krishna avatar, see, the incarnation this is the third stage of avatar and from then he was called Lord Aya Vaikundar. Then Lord Aya Vaikundar was given Vinchai by Narayanar, see, Vinchai to Vaikundar. According to Akilam Lord Aya Vaikundar was not merely Narayana and not merely Shiva, and not merely Brahma but all three. He had supreme power for the responsibility to destroy the evil of Kali. Another view is that Lord Vishnu did not take a human body and showed only a bodily appearance to mankind based upon quotes in Akilam. Tavam <tavam> Upon reaching Puvantanthop, present-day Swamithop, he undertook a penance. The penance consisted of three stages, each spanning two years. A tradition describes his postures during the six-year Tavam as follows, during the first two years, he stood inside a six-feet-deep pit, during the next two years, he squatted on the ground, and during the last two years, he sat on a raised platform. His appearance was squalid, long and entangled play of hair, and frayed clothes. He spoke less and subsisted on frugal meals. Topic: <inaudible> Supernatural abilities. Akilataratu speaks of his incineration of evil spirits as an important event in Lord Aya Vaikundar's incarnation. It took place when he was performing his penance, which he had announced to be the means of destroying the Kalamaya, the illusory evil force. He gathered the people and caused some of them, both male and female, to be possessed of the evil spirits Piatam. The possessed ones danced in front of the crowd as if the evil spirits had come upon them. Vaikundar, then, ordered these evil spirits to make an oath, in front of the people, to surrender their powers and incinerate themselves. When he had finished his orders, the dancers fell flat on the ground and burned. Similarly, Vaikundar performed another action to seize the esoteric evil powers. Akilam says that he took away the powers of those who knew to perform witchcraft, sorcery and other magical rituals. People living in the hills, called as Kanikar, were believed to be powerful shamans, having powers to contain or to provoke the demons. Vaikundar, in a trance, made some of them testify that they had surrendered their powers. People grew appreciative of Aya's actions. They began addressing him as Vaikunasami. This implied an attribution of divinity to Vaikundar. Vaikundar exhorted the people as follows There are no demons, no devils. No ill effects of magical practices. No disease, no pain and no extortion of taxes. And, therefore, live courageously. <laughs> Five sitars Lord Aya Vaikundar has five disciples sitars. According to Holy Scripture Akilataratu Amanai the Pandavas of previous Dwapara Yukam was made to take birth in this Kali Yukam as Sitars of Vaikundar. They are Dharma Sitar, Bhima Sitar, Arjunan Sitar, Nakulan Sitar and Sakadevan Sitar. <laughs> Vaikundar as Narayana Pandaram The fame of Vaikundar began to spread in the countries of Travancore and Tirunelveli and he was gradually recognized as a religious person with extraordinary powers. 
He was addressed as a pantarum, a religious person hailing from and serving the ordinary folk. Akilataratu addresses him as Narayana Pantaram. People came to listen to his teachings and instructions, to be cured by him of different diseases, to witness, worship, and serve a religious person. Vaikundar encouraged the people to come together around a well to take a ritual bath, irrespective of caste. He encouraged them to dine together in his presence. He stressed that he had come to abolish Kali Yukam and to usher in an age of Dharma Yukam, when the now oppressed and suffering people would be liberated and rule the land under his leadership. Uplift of the lowly as dharmam was a constant refrain in his teachings. People were encouraged to serve as catalysts for the destruction of Kali by transforming themselves to be people of Dharma Yukam and to acquire a new character. The new character would come upon them, he said, if they learned to live with self-respect, social dignity and fearlessness. Underscoring the importance of self-respect and social dignity, he said, if one lives with dignity and self-respect, the Kali would destroy itself. He said when people grew out of Kalamaye, Dharma Yukam would unfold and in that age, he would rule over the people as Dharma Raja, the king of Dharma Yukam. According to the legend as per Holy Akilam, when Kaliyan was born, he got the boon from Supreme God Shiva, which has more powers than compared to which he got on previous yugas. When he was on the way to earth, Lord Narayana was in the form of Pantaram stopped him and asked him to fight with. When Kaliyan was ignored, Lord Narayana asked him to promise, Going forward I won't fight or disrupt any Pantaram. If I will do so, will lose everything and will go to hell. That is the reason Lord Narayana has taken his tenth avatar on this Kaliyuga as Narayana Pantaram. Arrest and imprisonment He made some controversial statements like mentioning the Travancore king as devil in Ananthapuri and the British rule as rule of white devils. Against the background of the growing popularity of Vaikundar and the convergence of people around him in multitudes, a complaint was lodged against him with the king of Travancore. The Travancore king Swati Tirunal arrested Vaikundar in 1838 and imprisoned him at Singarathopu jail in Travancore. After 110 days of imprisonment, on March 26, 1839 he was released by Swathitharunal on the advice of Thaiko Aya who was the guru of Swati Tirunal Maharaj and a disciple of Vaikundar as well. <laughs> Post-imprisonment After returning from the prison, Vaikundar inspired a group of his devotees to undertake a religious exercise called Thavayal Thavasu. He also performed miracles. He married Saptha Kanyar as Narayanar see, marriage with the seven virgins, the seven deities in the form of Ekam see, marriage with the deities. He initiated festivities see, festivals and celebrations, the deities were made to come upon some of the female devotees who became their human media and a marriage ceremony was performed. Ceremonial processions were held amidst singing, incantations and shouts of joy by the followers. Several rites and rituals were instituted during these occasions. <laughs> Lord Aya Vaikundar at Vaikundam Later Lord Aya Vaikundar was invited by his devotees to their homes and treated in a grand manner. By way of soliciting his blessings, his devotees carried him to different places. During these occasions, he laid foundations in various places for small shrine-like centers, called Nizhal Thangals. Lord Aya Vaikundar came to recognize five individuals as his closest disciples. Through one of his disciples, Hari Gopalan Sitar, he wrote the holy book, called Akilam. Lord Aya Vaikundar returned to Vaikundam on 3 June 1851. According to Ayavazi followers, he has returned to Vaikundam. However, this date is disputed, as Samuel Matir mentions the year as 1848. As he returned to Vaikundam, his body was interned in a tomb and, around that, a paddy temple was later built. His devotees continued to visit this site and performed the rituals as they used to do when Vaikundar was bodily present. His life and works remain the foundation of the Ayavazi. The head temple of the Ayavazi religion is the Swamithopapathi and is located in the village of Swamithop. In popular culture The film Ayavazi released in 2008 was based on the life of Lord Aya Vaikundar.
Topic See also Vishnu Hinduism Hindu reform movements Hindu renaissance Boons offered to Kalyan Ayavazi mythology Ayavazi trinity List of Ayavazi-related articles Kailasapuram Ayavaikundar temple